Have you ever wondered how one of the world's most complex conflicts began? The Israel-Palestine conflict is an intricate tapestry of historical events and political decisions, but let's start from the beginning, from the Israeli perspective. In the late 19th century, a European movement called Zionism emerged, spearheaded by Theodor Herzl. Zionists, largely Jews who faced escalating anti-Semitism, yearned for a national homeland, a safe haven where they could live freely. Their gaze turned toward Palestine, a land steeped in Jewish history, a land they believed was promised to them in their sacred texts. Fast forward to the early 20th century, a crucial moment arrived in the form of the Balfour Declaration in 1917. Arthur Balfour, the British Foreign Secretary, penned a letter to Lord Rothschild, a leading figure in the British Jewish community. His words were clear and unequivocal. His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. This was the first significant endorsement from a world power supporting the establishment of a Jewish homeland in Palestine. What followed was a wave of Jewish immigration to Palestine. Jews from around the globe, particularly from Eastern Europe, began to trickle in, driven by the dream of Zionism and the horrors of anti-Semitism. The Jewish population in Palestine grew, cementing Jewish presence in the region. However, there was a significant caveat. Palestine was not an uninhabited land. It was home to an Arab majority, who had been living there for centuries. They had their own dreams, aspirations, and sense of national identity. The land that was seen as a beacon of hope and safety for Jews was also home to the Palestinians. As a result, the stage was set for a conflict that would shape the region for the next century and beyond. The seeds of conflict were sown early, as the land promised to the Jews was already inhabited by the Palestinians. Fast forward to 1947, the United Nations proposed a partition plan, a decision that would change the face of the Middle East forever. The United Nations, in an attempt to resolve the ongoing tensions between Jews and Arabs in Palestine, proposed a partition plan. This plan aimed to divide the land into two states, one Jewish, the other Arab, with Jerusalem under international administration due to its significance to both parties. The Jewish Agency for Palestine accepted the proposal, seeing it as a pivotal step towards fulfilling their Zionist aspirations. However, the Arab leaders who viewed this land as rightfully theirs, rejected the plan. They argued it violated the principles of national self-determination, principles outlined in the UN Charter, for the majority Arab population in Palestine. Despite the Arab rejection and international controversy, the State of Israel was declared on May 14, 1948. This declaration marked the culmination of years of Jewish immigration and settlement in Palestine, largely driven by the Zionist movement that sought a homeland for Jews, particularly in the aftermath of the Holocaust's horrors. The declaration of the State of Israel was not met with universal acceptance. On the contrary, it was met with armed resistance from neighboring Arab states. This marked the beginning of the 1948 war, also known as the War of Independence in Israeli historiography. The conflict was characterized by a series of bloody battles, ceasefires, and temporary truces. By the end of the war in 1949, Israel had not only managed to maintain its sovereignty, but also extended its territory beyond the proposed partition plan. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were displaced during the war, a fact that remains a contentious issue to this day. The birth of Israel, seen as a haven for Jews after the horrific Holocaust, was met with resistance and led to the First Arab-Israeli War. The 1967 Six-Day War was a turning point in the conflict. It brought significant changes to the geographical and political landscape. In the early spring of 1967, tensions were escalating along Israel's borders, Egypt, Syria and Jordan, emboldened by a burgeoning Arab nationalism, were flexing their military muscles. The spark for the conflagration came when Egypt's President Nasser expelled UN peacekeeping forces from the Sinai Peninsula and blocked Israeli shipping routes in the Red Sea. Israel, feeling increasingly isolated and threatened, decided to strike first. On the morning of June 5, Israeli aircraft took off in a daring preemptive strike, decimating the Egyptian Air Force before it could take to the skies. In the days that followed, Israel's forces, though outnumbered, outmaneuvered and outperformed their adversaries. By the end of the six days, Israel had seized control of the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan, the Gaza Strip, and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt, and the Golan Heights from Syria. 
but victory came at a cost. With these territories came over a million Palestinians who found themselves under Israeli rule. This was a profound shift as the conflict morphed from a struggle between states into an occupation. However, the war also had far-reaching diplomatic implications. It led to the passing of the UN Security Council Resolution 242, which called for Israel to withdraw from territories occupied in the war in exchange for peace. But the interpretation of this resolution has been a bone of contention ever since, with disputes over which territories Israel should withdraw from and what constitutes a just and lasting peace. The Six-Day War changed the face of the Middle East. It expanded Israel's borders, gave it strategic depth, and transformed it into a regional power. But it also placed it in the center of a thorny political and humanitarian dilemma that continues to this day. The war ended with a decisive Israeli victory, but it also marked the beginning of a new phase in the conflict, the occupation of Palestinian territories. The late 20th century saw two significant uprisings, known as the Intifadas, and the initiation of a peace process. From the Israeli perspective, the first intifada, which began in December of 1987, was a time of heightened tension and violence. Palestinian protests and civil disobedience escalated into a full-blown uprising against Israeli control. The Israeli Defense Forces were tasked with quelling the unrest, a mission that was met with international criticism due to the high number of Palestinian casualties. The first intifada served as a catalyst for change. It led to the Oslo Accords, a series of agreements signed by Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization in 1993 and 95. For the first time, Israel officially recognized the PLO as the legitimate representative of the Palestinian people, and in return, the PLO acknowledged Israel's right to exist. The Accords also laid out a plan for Palestinian self-rule in parts of the West Bank and Gaza Strip. However, the peace process was fraught with difficulties. The second intifada, which erupted in 2000, was even more violent than the first. This time, the Israeli public was shocked by a wave of suicide bombings and other attacks on civilians. The Israeli government responded with military force, reoccupying many areas that had been handed over to Palestinian control under the Oslo Accords. The Camp David summit in 2000, aimed at reaching a final status agreement, ended without a resolution. Both sides blamed each other for the failure of the talks. For Israelis, the summit represented a missed opportunity for peace, with then Prime Minister Ehud Barak offering a proposal that would have led to the creation of a Palestinian state. But the Palestinians rejected the offer, claiming it did not meet their minimum requirements. Despite attempts at peace, the conflict remained unresolved, with both sides holding on to deep-seated grievances and aspirations. The intifadas and the peace process marked a pivotal chapter in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, underscoring the complexity of the issues at hand and the challenges of achieving a lasting peace. So how does Israel view this century-long conflict? In the heart of the Middle East, Israel perceives itself as an island amidst an ocean of hostility. The conflict for Israelis is not just about politics or territorial disputes, it is a struggle for survival. From its inception, Israel has faced existential threats from its neighbors. This has shaped a national psyche that is always on guard, always ready to defend its existence. Israel's need for security is not a theoretical concept. It is not an abstract idea discussed in the lofty halls of academia. It is a tangible, palpable reality that every Israeli feels. It is the reason why Israeli youths serve in the military after high school, why bomb shelters are a common sight, and why every major decision Every peace negotiation, every diplomatic agreement is viewed through the lens of security. But this struggle is not just about surviving. It's also about thriving. It's about creating a safe haven for Jews from all over the world, a place where they can express their culture, their religion, their identity without fear, a place they can call home. This quest for a homeland is deeply rooted in the history of the Jewish people, a history marked by persecution, expulsion, and genocide. The Holocaust in particular has left an indelible mark on the collective memory of Israelis. It serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of statelessness, of the need for a sanctuary, a place of refuge where Jews can be safe. This is not to say that Israelis are oblivious to the suffering of the Palestinians or that they are unwilling to make compromises for peace. But any solution must address these fundamental concerns, survival, security, and a homeland. They are non-negotiable. They are the pillars upon which the State of Israel stands. 
From the Israeli point of view, the conflict is a struggle for survival in a region where they are outnumbered, a fight for security amid constant threats, and a quest for an internationally recognized homeland for the Jewish people.